Hello, welcome back to the Halloween Spooktacular. Today I'm just going to be talking about five things that actually spooked me. Almost four or actually over four years ago, I did uh, things that freaked me out. And you'll see one of those things pop up again because it's probably one of my number one fears. But I did one of those tags where you talk about like things that scary you. Although I think maybe some of, some of those were things that used to scare me, some of them uh, are still things that scare me, but I'm going to talk about five more things I guess that scare me. One that you've already know of, and then the other four I think I didn't actually mention in that. So uh, here we go. First thing, and it's actually going to scare me to even put up a picture, is frogs and toads. Uh, even editing this the anxiety is probably building up in editing just right now. Uh, I don't know why I'm afraid of frogs and toads. It's just been a thing. I can tell you one story is uh, back in second grade, my class took a field trip to Henry Vile Zoo in Madison, Wisconsin. It was a, I can remember it very vividly that day. It was a rainy day, so we didn't. There wasn't much going on. We almost had the zoo to ourselves, is who goes to the zoo on a rainy day. We went to the reptile exhibit, and we went into this back room because field trip stuff. And we went in the back room and to get like some one-on-one -on -one with some animals. And the first one, they're like, we're going to take a look at one of the most invasive species of Australia. The cane toad. Let me tell you, second grader me had anxiety because this person just whipped out a toad this big, that long, and I was sitting in the front row, so I got a good look at it from a distance, and I was like, nope, nah, -uh, nope, we ain't doing that. I'm not, you aren't game, you aren't bringing that close to me. And then what was worse was they decided that we didn't have a good enough view five feet away from it while someone was holding it at a table, so they came up to the front row. He started at the first person down from me, and I was at the other end, and then he started bringing the toad down towards me, and I was like, no, 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 you ain't gonna bring that toad near me. Luckily, they got two people down from me, and they just kind of went, no, huh? and I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, I just, I can't, I, now that I'm 21, though, I can at least get near uh, frogs and toads of a certain size my my body is finally let me or my brain is finally let me get to about frogs and toads about that big but any of those big motherfucking toads that we see here in Wisconsin they're like that big and saying that and sit that tall I uh, no I also have a fear that if someone picks up a frog or a toad I'm literally like already like getting away cuz I fear they're going to throw it at me. I don't trust anyone. Y'all acting a little sus when you have a toad or a frog in your hands near me. Number two. This one might sound ran random and weird, but I get anxiety and spooks whenever I see mental institution sequences in movies or television. Because usually movies and television go with the trope where it's like the main character, no one believes the main character, so they put them in a mental institute, and the whole movies are trying to like get people to like believe the them that they aren't crazy this is actually happening and then lo and behold no one's believing them they're taking extreme measures against them then uh oh this turns out the main character was right and yeah there were, there's a man in an invisibility suit or yeah that dude really was the devil himself uh there's a whole whole episode in season two lucifer called god johnson that gave me slight anxiety but not as much but then there's the sequence in the invi the most recent invisible man movie that I have a hard time, I probably can't even watch it just because of that. There's a whole movie where it's really cool, it's all shot on an iPhone. Like, someone took this, a professional filmmaker, and shot everything you see in that movie on an iPhone. Not like the whole iPhone 11, but an iPhone at the time. And it's called Unsane, and it's a whole movie basically of my own nightmare. Uh, and I can't watch it. The third one might actually be is actually quite ironic if you know me in real life. I make a I have a cartoon I call it a cartoon character, but I do want to make a series and that mainly or start on YouTube and that. Uh, but it's called Just in Time, like the channel name. 
and it's a extra dimensional character so he's not from this dimension he's but his dimension kind of works in our dimension and that he's basically extraterrestrial he's not from earth he's from a, another planet basically even though it's a dimension and he interacts with aliens and extra dimensional beings and gods and devils and de spirits and demons and aliens that's the big one and the irony is i'm actually kind of scared of extraterrestrials <laughs> Uh, mainly just hearing all the stories about abductions. That one really gets me. I can't, I have a hard time sleeping that when I watch something about, uh, aliens and they talk about the abductions and that. The fourth one, I've never actually experienced, though, but hearing about the phenomena and that is quite scary. To the point where I actually cover my eyes when I sleep, uh, with my pillow. And that is sleep paralysis demons. I've never had sleep paralysis. I'm. I don't want to ever experience it. Watch after I make. Watch. Now that I've said that, I am going to experience it th this night. Great. Specifically, sleep paralysis demons. I do not want to ever encounter. Uh, in my flaw, my my thinking process. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. Is if I cover my eyes and I do experience sleep paralysis, most likely my eyes will be covered still, and when I'm stuck, sleeping. My eyes will be covered. I won't be able to see anything. Can someone tell me if that's true? Because I haven't looked it up. <laughs> but that's how I sleep. When I start out sleeping, I sleep with my eyes covered. And I wake up with my eyes uncovered because I'm a very reckless sleeper. But sleep paralysis demons sound horrifying. Just waking up and then all of a sudden a demon just walks through your wall. And then just starts getting onto your bed and just stares over you and that. Not fun. Doesn't fa sound fun. Zero out of ten. Would not recommend. And I've never even tried it. The fifth and final one that I'm going to talk about is ghosts. Another irony with the whole just in time and he interacts with ghosts. And ghosts do kind of scare me. Not going to lie. It's it's something you can't see, and but you can interact with. And it could harm you if it wanted to. I'm not a big believer in ghosts. You can go... I'll link my uh, video of about my at the time girlfriend believing ghosts what do i think uh mainly with the fact that i have a i have a degree in in film and television and also editing i can i could most likely replicate almost every f evidence of paranormal with a camera and after effects on that you know the shittiest thing like i did it in that video with a picture of courage and my front yard which i don't live there anymore so if you ever find out where i lived in that area the era of time please do not go there it's not me anymore i it's one of those things where when i finally see it i'll believe it i've had some spooky encounters with possibly ghosts which i'll be talking about maybe later on this month with a friend but i can't definitively say it's a ghost but what I've seen in movies and TV shows is that ghosts are terrifying no matter what. You could say ghosts aren't scary, but, you know, Casper still scares people when they first meet him. Maybe the friendly ghost, but still a ghost and people are scared of ghosts. And those are five things that spook me. Let me know what five things spook you in the comment section below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we continue our Halloween Spooktacular. Bye, guys.